Hello everyone. In this presentation, we shall be discussing on what is the difference between deflation and disinflation. So we shall go into what causes inflation, deflation and disinflation and hence eventually discover the difference between deflation and disinflation. Now, just to quickly summarize, inflation is actually an increase in the money supply vis-a-vis -vis the increase in goods, services and financial assets in the economy. So, if the increase in money supply is much more than the increase in goods, services and assets in the economy, it indicates inflation. And hence, price rise or price increase is just a subset of inflation, not the entire inflation definition per se. Before we start, we'll have a brief con context of the modern monetary setup where we'll discuss how money is created and, and grow in the economy. Under the system, let's see how money is created in the economy. A person goes to the bank to get some loan. Now the bank takes from the person a collateral which can be an asset, I mean inventory and in lieu of that the bank grants him a loan and voila money is created in the economy because as the name suggests in this system credit is money. Now let's see how this money or credit generated in the system is inflationary at least in the short term. So with this credit the person sets up a factory, has built an infrastructure to in turn build products later on. Also using that money he invests some of this money in real estate because of which the prices of real estate rise. Also, he gives out salaries to his employees or to his workers who build the factory, employees who start working in that factory. That means that till now, once he does all this, he sets up the factory, gives salaries to people who build that factory or who starts working in that factory, invests in real estate, all these steps have yet to contribute to the increase in supply of goods and services while the money has already been created and distributed in the system. So there is demand because of that but the supply has yet to come which means there is inflation in the system which goes up. Of course after some time after a lack supply will come which will bring down the inflation and that is why growth and employment, increase in, um, un, increase in employment opportunities is inflationary in the economy at least in the short term. Now let's see how the money grows in the system. So the person who has taken the loan from the bank invests is in, biz, in his business and his business luckily grows. Now the person sees future demand and he approaches the bank for more loan. The bank since the business already has grown and the person has a bigger collateral to offer, the banks give him a bigger loan and voila, more money is created in the economy. But now comes the problem in the form of inflation. How? Let's see. Now, the person has taken loan from the bank. He This time he also invests in business. However, this time, because of some external circumstances or due to his own wrong decisions, the business turns out bad, a malinvestment. Or the person wrongly speculates in the real estate market. He invests money in the real estate. Or worse, he just spends it on himself. In all three scenarios, the goods created, goods or services are not created as they should have been in the economy. However, we do have credit 
a money supply that has already been created in the economy. So the economy has more money supply than goods and services and due to this mismatch, inflation happens. Let's look at the second scenario. This time again, the person either invests his money in the business, which unfortunately doesn't grow. He invests the money in real estate, which look good for him, rises in price. This asset price rise. In both circumstances, he approaches the bank for more loan. The bank grants them a bigger loan in both cases. This, at least in the former case, is known as what we call evergreening of loan. What happens is, with this bigger loan, the person gives back, pays back to the bank the old loan, and the remaining money he uses, either let's say for putting up his old business on road, investing again more in the real estate market, or the third scenario that, that we just saw, investing or put spending the money on himself in all cases again the required goods and services are not produced but more credit is created in the economy leading again to more inflation so let's see how inflation happens due to the increased fiscal deficit of the government now as you may all know that the government has a monopoly over money supply in the modern monetary setup. That essentially means the government can print money. Now, how it happens? Let's say the government spends in more money than it takes in as revenue. That means that is essentially first of all the fisc called the fiscal deficit of the government. And that would imply that the government issues debt to fund it. Now when this debt is bought by the central bank of the country is then how printing of money happens because the central bank is what who prints money out of thin air buys its debt and credits this money in the bank accounts of the government and voila money is printed indirectly by the government this in modern context is also known as QE or quantitative easing now, essentially, since the credit or the money supply in the economy is increased, while the, that means that this also increases the demand in the economy. However, the supply in the economy remains the same. And that implies, since supply remains the same, demand increases, that implies basically inflation increases in the economy. So now what is deflation? Deflation is essentially the opposite of inflation. So basically in deflation, we'll see a decrease in money supply or credit vis-a-vis -vis goods and services produced in the economy. Now, when I say relative increase, I mean the good, the production of goods and services may most likely also decline in the economy but the decline in money supply will be far more than good decline in goods and services production in the economy, leading to deflation. Deflation results when the inflation rate or the price rise goes to zero or below. So in deflation, the inflation rate goes into the negative territory. And hence, deflation can cause severe economic recession or even an economic crash. Let's see why deflation happens. As the definition says, deflation happens because there is a decrease in money, su money supply. A decrease in money supply can occur if, in a simple case, if a person goes to the bank and he doesn't see much demand for his goods and products in the economy. And so whatever loan that the person took from the bank, he gives the loan back. And voila, as easily as the money was created out of thin air by the banks, 
as easily, this money is also destroyed. If more and more people start doing it, deflation can happen in the economy. Now let's see scenarios in which deflation will happen ironically as a result of malinvestments that caused the inflation in the first place. Now what happens to credit that was generated by the bank and was causing inflation? Now, so let's say the business of the person has failed and even now the evergreening of loans that was happening for him has stopped. The asset market that was growing has collapsed. He has no, he has no money, no longer to invest further. And in third case, anyways, he has wasted money, has spent on himself. Now, a bank is asking for their, his, their loan back, but he has no money to return. Then what happens? So here's what happens when he has no money to return. The banks would take over the factory or for that matter any asset of that person into their custody and sell it over to a third party. So in effect wealth is being transferred from person A to person B. During this transfer there will be some credit destroyed in the economy as the market value or the value at which the bank sell over the asset to the third party will not exactly be the market value and so hence some deflationary pressures would be put on the economy with leading to some slowdown. Let's see the second scenario. In this case even the collateral value is insufficient for the banks to recover the loans. Then what happens? Enter the investors. They will start losing money. How? Well, because here the bank has to issue more equity or in some cases debt also to raise the money to cover its losses in the balance sheet. That means more credit destruction takes place and this can lead to a bigger economic slowdown. And now the third scenario. In this scenario, even the equity value of the bank is not sufficient to cover its losses. In this case, the federal government has to step in. They have to buy equity into the banks. And how would they do that? Well, they would use the taxpayers' money to do that. They would use the tax taxpayers' money to buy equity into the banks. Hence, as they are shifting wealth from the taxpayers and buying equity into the bank, this will lead to a lower demand in the economy and hence a lower slowdown. Also, since they're using equity, since they're using taxpayers' money to buy equity into the bank, it's very important that punitive actions are taken against people who are responsible for this mess. Otherwise, this phenomenon will repeat itself. And why the intervention of federal government is required? Because otherwise, we are in for a fourth scenario which is a bigger mess and that is in this case the depositors or in other words the common people would lose money. This would mean the banks have to write off large amounts of loans from their balance sheets causing enormous deflationary pressures on the economy and an eventual economic crash. So let's see what is now disinflation. Disinflation is essentially a fall in the inflation rate or basically a slowdown in the inflation rate or price rise. However, inflation rate is still in the positive territory in case of disinflation and therein lies the fundamental difference between disinflation and deflation. In disinflation, for example, inflation rate, if inflation rate goes from 4% to 2%, we call it disinflation. While in deflation, inflation rate can go into the negative territory. Disinflation can happen due to maybe the fall in demand in the economy, which can be recessionary 
and can ultimately lead to defla deflation for sure. Or it can happen due to some productivity improvements in the economy or a positive supply shock, which would essentially means that for the same amount of credit or, or a little more credit in the economy, you can have more supply in the economy, leading to disinflation. So let's see how it happens. Using the credit, there used to be some production in the economy that could cater to the prevalent demand. Now, there is some productivity improvement in the economy. Construction of expressways, technological enhancements, introduction of new production methodology can be so many things. So using the same credit or maybe a little more credit, the supply in the economy improves. And that supply can cater easily cater to the even the increase in demand. This scenario can result in disinflation. So let's see how disinflation happens due to a positive supply shock in the economy. Let's say that there is a supply increase in some of the basic most important commodities or raw materials in the economy. That means the price for these products or these inputs into the production declines. So even as even as the demand for goods are increasing in the economy, almost the same amount of credit or a little more credit increase in the economy can increase the supply of goods and services in the economy since the input prices have declined. And hence, that would, this would imply that inflation of prices in the economy the, or price rise in the economy is much lower, leading to disinflation. So let's conclude this presentation and summarize of what we have learned. Inflation is the rise in money supply versus the goods and services in the economy, while deflation is actually a fall in the money supply, an absolute fall in the money supply versus the goods and services in the economy. On the other hand, disinflation will be a fall in the rate of inflation. So it, it is a rise in money supply versus good and services in the economy, but that rise is at a lower rate. And that is the significant difference between deflation and disinflation. This deflation is an absolute fall in the money supply that results in an inflation going into the negative territory. While in dis disinflation, the rise, there is a, still a rise in the money supply versus good and service in the economy, but the rise is on a lower rate than the inflation that was in the economy earlier. So thank you very much for watching this presentation. Do subscribe if you like such content and comment in case you have, you have any questions. Thank you.